Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our next live stream. It's been a while since we've done a UK-based one, and today we're coming to you with a very special one, which is themed about Christmas topics. Today, the hosts of this webinar are myself, James. I will be in the background and also helping with a Q&A at the end of the session. We also are joined by Jamie, who is our sales manager for the South West of England. I will get that right. Welcome to you, Jamie. <laughs> Thanks, James. Afternoon, everyone. It's good to have you back. You obviously were in our last webinar as well, but today we have a new uh, special guest who is Craig. It was It's his first ever webinar. He is our product manager for Gateway Products. Welcome to you, Craig. Hi, James. Hi, everyone. Nice to be here. Nice to have you with us, Craig. Thank you. Now, I'm going to start off by saying, obviously, the guys didn't get the memo. I purposely came in prepared for this webinar with my Christmas jumper, but I guess I'm just a bit early, a bit too excited. Um, what the guys are going to do though throughout this webinar is they've got some great products which you can easily make yourself on your laser. They're made from various different materials. They're going to talk to you a little bit about the process. We've got some good videos and they're going to show you the products at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Jamie and Craig who are going to take you on a little journey through the different products you can make with your laser. Over to you guys. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Welcome, Welcome everybody. Um, thank you very much for joining us to start with. As normal in these uh, webinars please feel free to comment and chat away in the uh, in the box there uh, we'll try and pick up any questions as we go and as always we've got a little q a towards the end of the session as well uh, so first off like i said thank you welcome um general process of this webinar for for this christmas session will be very much inspiration from ourselves um please accept that we are mere sales guys uh, it's all very much myself and craig we're going to do some some basic information just trying to inspire you to use different materials um, and what maybe a couple of little tips and tricks of what we do to certain materials processing uh, we've got a couple of different machines we're going to use as well just to kind of broaden the range here um, and like james said we're going to show you the the product finished product um as well as the as the process videos as well so without further ado we'll jump straight into our first application where we're going to be cutting some paper and card so i'm going to pass over to craig who's going to run us through the first one here so I'll just add that one in thanks jamie yeah this is uh, just a basic paper snowflake um using our own laser laser papers 300 gsm this color is metal gold uh, it's been produced on our r400 which is uh our entry level glass tube machine from our new glass tube range um as i said this is a 60 watt machine they also available in a 100 watt machine um just a little tip on here, you see the blue tube on the right hand side of the laser head, that's the air assist. We've had that turned right down for, on here. And uh, we've also, we also recommend having the bed clean, um, which I didn't do the first time I did it. Um, and so we had some uh, wood residue on the back. So I recommend just having a clean bed for that. Uh, as with all glass tube machines, um, there's a little bit of extra kit that's required with it. Uh, we provide the chiller, uh, the compressor for the air assist and the standard out to air exhaust on that machine um, as part of the part of the package. So back to you, Jay, for your. Uh, Thank you, mate. Your yeah, so very much. We're just going to do it first off a little comparison here. So I'm going to run with a speedy 100 now running the same paper card. But this one, we're using a, a metal galvanized finish, better known as silver. Um, just to show you a bit of speed process between the two. So like Craig said with the R400, uh, we're using a glass tube. On this one, Speedy 100, we're using a 60 watt ceramic tube. And slight differences in these machines, we're using a servo motor in this one. We've got the air assist is built into the machine, um, which we can con control via our software. Um, slightly smaller bed sizes. And again, the different lenses options we can use on these as machines as well. So. Just like Craig said, though, with paper and card, a really, really good tip is to, to try and make sure we have a separate bed for your pro paper processing and for your wood processing. It's very easy for, for wood processing. The machines get very dirty. Um, and like Craig said, they get a lot of wood residue sat on the bed, which will, as we go over it with the heat, come back onto our products. So very worthwhile just making sure that you've got a separate bed for, for paper processing. Hopefully there, that gives you kind of a nice early sample of kind of speeds between those two machines. Craig's going to show us the, the final product. And like I said, the idea is to give you a little bit of inspiration. Um, so there you go, they're stuck together again. Yeah, I mean, as Jamie mentioned, we, we are just sales guys um, with a lack of creativity, but um, I, it gives you the general idea of what can be done. 
So maybe just a little, like a little process for a little garland or something or a little tree decoration. Um, obviously, a little bit of colour matching and coordination with various ribbons and whatnot. Uh, you'll, you'll probably get sick of the sight of this uh, red ribbon by the end of the, uh, the <laughs> webinar. But if it, first off, nice simple one to uh, to get yourselves going. Um, and like I said, this webinar all about kind of just giving you guys some ideas, some thought patterns to various products as well. So we'll straight off that one, we'll jump into our second product, which will be quite a, pro, a standard process for a lot of our customers will be rubber stamp making. Um, but we thought we'd just add something a little bit extra to this one um, of actually making the handles and stuff of the stamps themselves as well. So I'm using here, again, the Speedy 100 to cut out some, some wood veneer to make the, the actual handle for the stamp, which you'll get to see very shortly after the video. Um, and then obviously straight into here now to obviously rubber stamp making. So the beauty of our machines with the speedy range with job control uh, is using the stamp process mode, which will automatically flip your artwork and invert it for you. So nice and easy for artwork creation. Um, a big thing here to take into consideration, as you can see from the video here, is the amount of dust we get with, ru with rubber. Uh, so there's a lot of more maintenance, a lot more cleaning to these sort of products um, as we go through as well. So very worthwhile. Just keep in note that you may want to go for slightly higher extraction uh, if you're processing rubber. Um, and like I say, the cleaning process after the jobs as well as just to clean that machine down after the, each job almost with rubber because um, there's lots and lots of residue to it, lots of rubber dust, and it sticks to everything. So very much worthwhile just keeping it nice and clean, as clean as you can. And the better we, well, the more, cle more clean. That's a great English phrase. Um, the cleaner we keep our, our machine, the better it is all round for, for the machine and obviously for actual products that we're making as well. So, Craig, I think you've got the rubber stamp there as well. Um, so again, yeah, we tried to I have the, uh, excuse me, <laughs> my camera skills are not fantastic, but there's the uh, there's the rubber stamp. So I tried to do a little end product as well, maybe onto to the plas uh, paper bags here um, as a little giveaway. We've just done one there with Happy Holidays and a little snowman just to give you a nice little effect. And Jamie, Jamie's almost got the rubber stamp attached correctly. <laughs> As we said, mere sales guys, not application uh, specialists here. So just gives you a couple of extra ideas here. And I said with the paper bag there, maybe just the local thing nowadays of local shopping. Thank you for shopping small. Maybe another option to go for. Um, obviously, your ideas and, and artwork will uh, be much better than ours. So hopefully gives you a couple more ideas to fly through obviously as you've seen there with sorry the rubber i'll just point out that picked up is self-adhesive um to actually stick stuff together now the wood veneer that we cut for the handle had a self-adhesive sheet applied to the back uh, as well as the rubber sheet itself um and as craig said again my wonderful application skills highlighting the fact that i put it on upside down um but this just allows it to make sure we can actually cut through the adhesive at the same time mm. as we're cutting the material. So it makes a nice and easy process rather than having to try and stick stuff together uh, after the for making the product. Uh, so Excellent. we're flying through nice and quickly here. Um, just going to say, oh, this big hello from Amy. Amy, nice to see you again. Uh, she's featured a couple of times. And um, no, a big friend of, uh, of Johnny's in the uh, in the in the Midlands for us. So big welcome to, to Amy. Thanks for, for shouting out. Guys, please feel free to comment in the uh, in the live chat and uh, ask any questions as we fly through these uh, these applications. Next one in. So over to over to you again, Craig. I'm going to run through some leather, I believe. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, my favourite one. <laughs> um, right, what we're going to do here, some uh, leather gift tags. Uh, this is uh, our, our own laser leather. Um, which is available sheet sizes of 813 by 508 mil, uh, supplied in uh, packs of five sheets. Uh, again, this is a 60 watt uh, R400. We're using uh, raster engraved for the text and the image there. And as you can see, that was just a, a vector engraved using a Z offset for the, uh, for the circles around the text. Um, a good tip for using glass tube is using the correction value. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
<laughs> something's on fire it's not the laser <laughs> um yeah so again we've got the air assist turned down um we've got uh correction levels on the engrave so uh, i just share my screen now just to show you that we can have um uh, an effect on the correction um in our settings on each color so in each color here we've got the vector engrave we've got the 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 raster engrave and the cut um, give so us two the... second sorry great jump in we just seem to be stuck on the materials database we don't see i've just got job control on screen at the moment oh have you let's try that let's cancel has that worked no it seems to highlight the materials database but i can't see it on screen which is interesting okay well under each color under the advanced column um we can change the correction value so what we can do let's get out of this so yeah you're back on screen now mate sorry about um, that sorry yeah, yeah. I don't know what's happened there but i'm sure most of our customers there know job control and know our database um so sorry but i'll talk about to you mate yeah no problem yeah so in the advanced column we can change the correction value for each um for each color so this enables us to engrave a little bit quicker uh, with the nature of a glass tube, sometimes it's not quick enough to keep up with the laser head. So what we do is we can we can add a correction value, which gives it a boost at the acceleration and deceleration point um, so that we can engrave faster. Fantastic. And um, you've got the final product there that we've, we've made as well. We've got a couple of tags. I have. I have indeed. Again, red ribbon. <laughs> a little <laughs> bit of red ribbon. But as you can see there, it's uh, a nice touch, but it's just something different from the uh, from the usual card um so yeah it's 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 quite impressive and that's uh, again it's our design so <laughs> it's not too technical but um yeah it's a nice little touch i think to add to the to gifts at christmas yeah something a little bit different um one thing you mentioned there great with the z offset um just explain a little bit about z offsets for, for guys who probably don't use it or may not have a true tech machine what yes, are z offsets yeah. <laughs> yes, so we've just adjust, adjusted the uh, the height of bed, so we run the laser slightly out of focus, so that we can um, just make a thicker line, and also we can take the power out of it, so it obviously doesn't cut through. Fantastic, thank you very much. No problem. Wonderful. So, another application in and out of the way. Uh, hopefully, your minds are all buzzing by now uh, with various materials now and, and ideas um, like we said we're, we're mere sales guys giving you some hopeful inspiration today um and i want to go on to one now that actually cropped up recently that i commented on in a facebook post of on, on one of our forums is doormats something that's uh, really popular especially this time of year uh, i think it's something that's really come on massively this year it seems to be a real big trend for for doormats this year so what then we're running is our speedy 300 on this one um and there's a couple of things that really stood out for me um was running it a i run it with an offset again as craig said run it slightly off out of focus so i run it with a three mil uh, z offset uh, i ran this at full power and full speed with the 80 watt co2 shrummy core uh, but the big difference I found uh, was actually running with the air assist switched off when we engraved um, on this product. So I know it's, I'm going to get the word coir, I believe it's, it's pronounced. Uh, or better. Coconut matting is probably better though. Um, normally, obviously with wood, it will vary, but we tend to have it on and off for, for various applications with engraving, um, but really made a big, big difference to me uh, when I tested this product was to have that air assist switched off. And again, using the, the Z offsets, just brought it slightly darker finish. Um, we run it in focus, we almost engraved kind of a layer away almost uh, with the actual, to the material. Uh, so we're using the Z offset, we're almost sort of burning the surface of it rather than really getting in deep into the engraving. So as this runs through, there we go. I will just come back to my screen and if I share, ooh, Sorry, guys, I've just clicked the wrong button. Let me go to Solo Loud Me. There we go. And show you the final products we've got here. So, as you see, come back a little bit. Really highlighted it. The duration of this, um, like I said, is very much worth surface marking it. So, 
I can't guarantee that it's going to be something that's going to last for big muddy boots walking around at Christmas time um, because we are just very much surface scratching it. It's more of a an image thing uh, than a long lasting product. Um, but effectively, we are burning into it. So as long as it's looked after, we should be all good. Uh, I've just, just noticed what well, we've got. A question just come into the live chat here from Nadine. Nice to see you, Nadine. Thanks for joining us. Let's have a quick read through. Like reading this live, so please bear with us a second. Do you have any problems with the, the complaints because the mats lose material and this engraving is quickly no longer visible? Very much. Um, probably just answer the, answer the question there. Um, it's not something else we sell. It, we are just producing these as samples. Um, it's not something I can guarantee you with regards to complaints inside of losing the, the material. Yes, potentially, like I said, if you've got money boots coming in, rubbing their feet through it, there is a potential we're going to lose that material engraving quality uh, over a period of time because uh, we are very much removing a surface layer of the material or just burning the surface of the material. Um, so I think it's probably more of a, an ornamental thing rather than to be used 24 7 over christmas uh, especially in the weather that we've got in bristol today <laughs> it's quite terrific yeah good stuff uh sorry i've just seen i think we've got another another question in here live it's asking about the did you use a regular store-bought doormat or are these are there any special ones uh i can tell you i've brought these uh from just a regular store um wasn't anything special at all to these ones uh like i said this one is particular is a a koya coconut mat um but that no, brought from a regular store nothing special to them whatsoever excellent so moving through sorry i'm gonna run through on to our next one well, i'm going to show you some some live products i think we're uh, we're all done with some video content here um, so I'm going to run through some other ideas just to, to have a li little run through. So I'll start whilst we're on the, the wood process is cork. So this is just something that um, free more cork. So this is a laser cork that we supply again on our web shop. And uh, this is a three mil cork. And we've engraved and then cut out for something that Something simple like a, a placemat or also you can do smaller versions, do coasters. I've kept this one nice and clear. But again, just highlighting something again, something a little bit different. Um, let's jump through. Sorry, I'll jump back to uh, Craig. I believe you've got one as well, mate. Yeah, yeah. I've just got a um, Hessian sack. Uh, this is the one my uh, other half's got around for our 20 month old daughter at Christmas just for one off use, but it's quite a nice, uh, nice touch. It's only a cheap Hessian sack that was uh, bought off of a major online retailer, I believe. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, this was good. what was this produced on, Jamie? I ran that one on our Speedy 100. So it is only, like I said, a nice small little um, Hessian sack. But obviously very, very popular. I've seen these again over the last couple of years where people have printed onto them. Um, just want to show you something potentially that we could do with, uh, you could laser them as well. Um, so again, that one again, we ran very much low power. Um, run it very slightly out of focus. I think I ran that one with a with a 1.5 mil Z offset to it. Um, again, just to try and take some of the heat to it. So we're just very much surface scratching it. Again, with Hessian, um, similar to doormats, just need to be careful there that we don't hit it too hard because we go too heavy with it. We all go through that Hessian. Um, and again, once you start loading stuff into it, it's just going to rip apart. Um, so just be careful with it. Maybe look to go for slightly higher quality, thicker Hessian rather than cheap and cheerful stuff. Um, again, better quality, thicker material we can get to, a little bit more structural uh, quality we're going to keep to that as well. Uh, so another one to chuck at you let's go into something relatively simple which you've probably seen quite a lot of um it's just a standard kind of baubles uh, i just want to show i'll highlight this one a little bit different uh, with a couple of little processes that we've done on this one so sorry if i just solo in my screen here is yet again the nice 
red ribbon of Christmas. <laughs> uh, it is running through with, I was just standing in grave. So this is a, a translucent acrylic. We've engraved obviously the Ruby first or Ruby Christmas. We've cut through the first just to give you an idea of something a little bit different. Um, and then obviously thirdly is layer up with some glitter acrylic on the top there. Um, so one process I did do this just to make sure we got the heart in the right place was use a little vector line. So sim similar to what Craig did earlier on the on the leather uh, is literally just turn the power down and run cut line, turn that power right down. So we've vector engraved it really into position so that we know we're bang center um, of, the, of the text as well. So when we're placing that heart, we've got it in the exact position we need to get it to. So another little cheap way of putting stuff together if you're layering things up on top of each other, just maybe run a little quick uh, quick vector line uh, just to uh, get your positions in, in right place. Yeah. Uh, think, sorry, go on. Think, I think you've got the other, have you got the other one? The other ball ball? You were I have, mate, yes. Thank you for... <laughs> Another one of my favourites. <laughs> Read through, through here, so hopefully you can see this. I've loaded it with some fake snow just to give you give it a bit more of a Christmassy look to it, but your standard kind of ball ball, uh, it's just a fillet. Um, so what I've done originally is cut and engraved the little dog in there, if you can see that. So that's on our Trocraft Eco material. Uh, so it's like an eco-friendly MDF that we pr we provide. Um, and then on the surface of the bauble here, I've used our product called Trolays Thins, uh, which is the, as it is, uh, 0.5 mil brushed silver uh, Trolays Thin. And we do this with, comes complete with self adhesive on the back, our standard in the sheet size, just to kind of give you an extra, something a little bit different as well. So we can personalize the front or we can mark the front but just being able to fill it as well. Obviously, there's lots of more, again, high-quality baubles out there. Uh, you get glass ones that can be filled. Uh, seems to be a real popular thing this year that I've noticed. Um, this baubles going into being able to fill. And it, beauty of, again, with lasers, it's the amount of materials that we can really process um, and enjoy. So just another little ideas, um, just give you a, a heads up, really. Again, filling, filling baubles, adding stuff to it. So I create over to you, I believe. Yeah, really good that, Jamie. So, um, yeah, I've got some coffee dusters. So this is three mil acrylic um, coffee dust dusters. We could use mylar, which is a lot thinner, normal um, sort of stencil material. Um, so I've got me obviously corporate mug. Um, so if Uncle Brian comes over on Christmas Day and he wants his cappuccino. Have a nice little Father Christmas on the top or Santa Claus, depending on your preference. Uh, or just got a Merry Christmas and a snowflake on that one. Um, just fill over the top of the mug, away you go. So, yeah, another nice little touch for uh, for Christmas Day or or whenever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nice little personal touches that you see quite often in in your general uh, coffee shops. Just something you can bring bring a bit home. Um, and again, be a little bit more spoke with. Obviously, we've done standard text there with Merry Christmas, maybe personalising it a little bit more. Um, just extra little ideas. It's a great enough. One into that. And probably one we see quite a lot of now is, and this one isn't overly Christmassy, uh, so I've just grabbed this one as a sample out of my showroom. It's your standard kind of chopping boards. Obviously, you see quite often, uh, or we see, especially around Christmas time, is your Christmas Eve boxes. Uh, so just engraving the tops of them. And the beauty being wooden is the variety we can get with this one. So this one, we've gone relatively deep in the engrave there. You can roughly see it on the camera um, to get a bit of darker color. Uh, we can also do, again, varying the powers and speeds. So what we could have done is change the text, maybe gone at 50% power, 100% speed, and got a real light marking on, the, on one line, run it at full power, full speed, and got a real sort of darker finish. Um, and then again, running with those Z offsets again, as we've mentioned quite a bit today, is to run it out of focus and we can run down to 10, 15 mil maybe uh, and really just burn the surface of it. So it just gives you another different finish effectively. Um, really good one to play with around with it is with wood because you can get lots of variation of finishes and different woods again have different reactions. So you've got things like your bamboo and that with the grains that go through it, that really highlights and stays in the engraving. Uh, some people really like it because it's got a natural finish. Um, again, 
just lots of power and speed settings that we can run with with those ones whereas certain materials you'll find that you've got one power and speed settings at all the only way it's going to react so always worth having a real look around at these sort of things um, and going on to one that tends to react in one way is one that i believe craig is going to show us now a full bottle of wine may i add um <laughs> yeah might this not is, be no it might not be the um uh, yeah, it's just basically, this is obviously an engagement, not, not Christmas-based, but obviously gives you an idea. I think it was more to share, uh, to share what we've actually what we've actually used, Jamie. I think you did this one. Um, I did, yes, mate. So uh, I used a product on this called Rub and Buff. Uh, so it's like a metallic -y paint that you rub over the surface of the engraving. So we run the engraving as normal with a rotor attachment, which I will highlight very shortly. Um, and glass tends to react in, in one way. Um, there's lots of tips and tricks that out there of using wet paper towels. Um, some people use masking. I've seen some people use wallpaper paste, uh, which came from one of our sales guys up north. Uh, he was trying it out. Apparently, came with relatively good effects as well. Just to try and take that initial impact, so you're not cracking the grass as such. Um, we're getting a lot more of that frosted soft finish. Um, and then what we've used there on that one was a product called Rub and Buff, as I said, uh, which is basically rub it on and then immediately buff it off effectively and the paint sticks to the engraved area and just buffers off the uh, off the glassware. Uh, so they do a range of metallic finishes um, as well as some some whites, I think, and a bit of red. Uh, it's not a product we sell, unfortunately, uh, but you can find it on most of the, uh, the online stores, the most popular ones out there. Uh, but with the rotary, uh, we've also Got a little video just to finish off the last video. I, I lied earlier. We've got one more to go. So I'll see a rotor attachment for those of you who haven't got one or haven't seen one. The laser works in the same same way. Uh, so we move left and right and raster over the top. And just bring that through. And then the rotor attachment basically clamps it, clamps the product and rotates the product. So as you can see here, the speedy 300 we're using today on this one, the wrote the Laser head arm comes straight into the center point of the rotor attachment for us. So all we need to do is find the center point of your of your cup or your mug. We use the red dot pointer as a live feedback so you can get that nice central position. Uh, and then, like we said, just moves left and right, rasters across, and then the product moves around. So on this video, we're using one of our laser roll coffee mugs. Uh, it's one of the products that we sell, again, on our web shop. Um, and as this goes through, I'll just let this one finish so you can see it. But we do a range of, again, each obviously machine size comes with a, a, a machine, uh, comes with a machine, comes with a rotor attachment um, as a added extra, basically. So you can add it on at any point. It just plugs into the side of the machine. Uh, and like I said, it takes off that Y axis movement. So it stays nice and central to the, the rotor attachment. And we're almost finished there. So as we come through, I can start that one in. And I will show you the live product. So hopefully you can see this here. Again, let me just solo my screen quickly. There we go. So all we've done is effectively remove that paint layer that's on the on the cups themselves. So the stainless steel cups with the precast painted. And we've just removed that paint layer to give you a nice finish. And lighting here is not great, so I'm trying to get it to so, so you can see through. Uh, of a nice stainless steel cut finish. Yeah, so hopefully good. there's a pair out there somewhere gasping for a coffee because. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but while we're on that, I was just going to show you on the rotor attachment for for those of you who may not yet register for Ruby. Uh, I know there isn't a lot of time left. We need to get on there before the end of November. So please get in contact with your sales guy um, to talk about Ruby and the benefits of Ruby. I just want to show you one real uh, benefit of Ruby with the rotary attachment uh, while we're on the rotary attachment is as we come through. So this is Ruby. Uh, the red line in the center here is our center line. And obviously we've got our graphic that we were, were using here for Claire's Coffee. The rotary attachment is the little symbol at the top here where we put our diameter. And then we have the option here to show a 3D effect. So this shows us now our design on the cylindrical object. And we can actually animate this, this feature as well. Oops, I'll slow that down a little bit. 
so you can see exactly where your design is. If you're not happy with it, let me just stop that one. We can move the design down, we can move it up, and we can move it around wherever it needs to be. Again, I'm not connected live to a machine at the moment, so we would have obviously the crosshair, live feedback crosshair on here as well, so you can snap to your job. Um, but I really like this new feature of the, of the rotor attachment to be able to see exactly where you're positioning this along your cut. So to also make the size here, we can use the coordinates from the X and Y positions to make the cut bigger or smaller. And then we'll position it again, like I said, with the live feedback, you'd have the crosshair on screen, we can snap to it, but being able to animate it makes it a lot easier, a lot, especially if guys have seen a lot of people out there um, looking to do both sides of a glass, for example. Um, so you can work with the diameters, but you can always check on here before you run it that you've got your, your diameter uh, and circumference measurements right to make sure you're, you're directly opposite each other. Good feature. Yeah, I love it. It's, yeah, great little app. Just gives that peace of mind when you're running a rotor attachment. Excellent. I think that brings us towards the end of every product. I don't think we've got any left lying around, Craig, have we? I don't think so, no. I think that's uh, that's us done. Wonderful. Well, we'll just run through, see if there's any questions here in the live chats. Uh, we've got one here. Looks like the guys have answered it. So. Excellent. So, Anyone there that's got any live questions, feel free to jump them in. I know we've got a couple that were asked for before the webinar. Uh, so we've got one here. Let's just jump onto this one. Any suggestions for metal applications for Christmas? Metal applications, again, require obviously fibre laser. Um, Unfortunately, we don't do a fiber laser strong enough to cut any metal. So the applications I can think of off the top of my head would be kind of part marking or say part marking, marking, personalizing already metallic products. So things I've seen out in the field would be something like uh, cuttery sets. Uh, so you can get I've seen them for first babies. One of my customers does them. Uh, just personalizing a, a knife, fork, spoon. Um, we also do things like our Trolays metallic range. Uh, so that's actually a plastic so then we can actually cut and engrave it uh, so again various baubles um your imaginations are uh, much better than ours uh, mm -hmm. so <laughs> trying to inspire you on the spot really not as, the I think, as i think everyone's seen during the uh... yeah absolutely <laughs> um but actually saying that, say that i have got is one more video so i keep saying there's no more videos but we have got one more video I wanted to share with you. Uh, if I can just really share my screen here. Is application that's on our YouTube. Uh, so if I full size this one is something a little bit more inspirational with a range of products so that really comes into our trolleys materials. So it's a trolleys metallic material here for the door numbers. So an advent calendar that we kind of made 3D uh, with a great little display. So one of our colleagues here actually made this one for us and we've got a little video of how it's all kind of put together. So we've used a range of materials from veneered MDF again with various finishes, actually making the, the main housing. We then use that Trolleys metallic as a front color and then bound it all together. So we've got a nice advent. Then used self adhesive spray to put some laser paper onto some pre-cut card and um, we're looking here to basically layer it up so as you can see there at the bottom layers up to give us a kind of 3d effect image at the top of the house and then finished off with a bit of led, LED lighting to to brighten up a bit for us so a little bit more in depth and a bit more creative uh, than myself and craig that we've jumped in with a nice 3d product and then finishing off with again some self-adhesive i think that's some ada trolleys uh, and then some green on white trolleys material so this is two ply laminates that we've cut and engraved all of these products to give you a nice real good finish uh, the final, uh, yeah really good that one um really enjoy seeing these we've also seen as you see if you pop into our um 
into any of our showrooms is some of the pop art we do with acrylics so layering up acrylic uh to give sort of a 3d 3d effect of it and sorry jumping through just trying to multitask here not again one of my strengths there's a question come in um jamie yeah. from from ross um it says who can we contact about changing from job control to the ruby software a uh, best contact ross would be your local area sales guy uh he can he can walk you through it uh talk you how to register it you can actually register through our website um and download ruby now uh with the latest version of job control and then basically you get a, a super admin password to log all your details in and then your local area sales guy is probably the best person to contact um if you don't know who that is just give them the main office number a ring uh, let them know where you're calling from and they'll be able to help you out and pass you over to the, to each individual. Thanks, Jamie. Excellent. And thanks, Amy. Okay, yes, thank you, Amy. Definitely, again, check out the, uh, the materials website. Uh, we've got the, uh, what am I looking for? Web shop. Uh, so you can register mm -hmm. for your own web shop, uh, which will then be able to register and get prices and stuff on there as well. And obviously, feel free to give the girls in the office a ring. Really, really helpful. Really nice. Um, and be able to give you some tips and tricks all the way through as well on the on the web shop, uh, on our website. Uh, and you can reach us if I again try and multitask nice and simply at engraving hyphen supplies. And again, little tips and tricks as well, guys, is to keep an eye out on our obviously our YouTube channels. Uh, that's why you're here. Uh, and also have a look through our website. We've got a knowledge page on our website uh, with a lot of DIY samples where we've highlighted some actual sample files uh, and the materials we've used and the settings we've used. And you can actually download some of the settings as well. Uh, so you can use it straight away. So you can get some really good ideas on various materials as well. Um, really helps out a lot of our customers. Uh, so please feel free to have a scour around. Again, if you're not too sure and too much, Give you guys give, give guys a ring uh your local area sales guy uh he can point you in the right direction uh, good stuff there was another question jamie i think the um uh the co2 um versus diode question oh yeah let me just jump in there we go, there we go. so interesting using a laser for wool and card trying to decide with co2 laser or diode laser would be better um to be honest i I've never used a diode laser. Laser, it's not something we supply, um, so can't really comment on whether that's going to be any better or worse for you. Uh, CO2 laser, absolutely for for card, for wool. Uh, really, I would say you need to test it. Uh, it depends on the wool. Um, I've had some very much result with with fabrics. Uh, bizarrely, I'm laughing here because I've, I've tested some cotton wool. Bizarrely, of all things, uh, which really wasn't worthwhile trying. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, very very prone to uh, to flaming and obviously straight away the flame came in and cotton wool disintegrates rather quickly um so i, I stick away from that uh, for standard wool yeah not one i've tested um like i said i've tried cotton i've tried fleece I've tried denim all these sort of fabrics yes wool probably with the five the kind of due to the fabric you've kind of got a lot of fibers loose it's probably more of a fire hazard than anything so really worth giving you guys a ring supplying the wall that you want to trial um, and let us give it a test um, and we'll be pretty honest with you if it doesn't work it doesn't work um, and we'll tell you why yeah absolutely um, also there obviously saying you're considering a, to buy a cheaper laser to see how it all works um, really worth diving into that speak to come and speak to us uh, all of our sales guys here because we can really aspect all, all ends of laser we've brought out the new gateway product um with craig there the glass tube machines as well as the obviously our, our, our core range of the, of the ceramics uh, there's lots of possibilities and it will really vary um so what i always say is don't necessarily always look for the cheapest option um because there are obviously pros and cons to both um and if you're looking at really lowering your power levels there um i think as craig mentioned earlier uh, the glass tube doesn't output quite so well at the lower power so your power of the actual laser tube is very important on a glass tube um which is slightly different to a ceramic core tube so please feel free give us a ring get in contact with us let us kind of explore it with you um and talk you through the pros and cons of each of those 
Yeah, absolutely that, Jamie. I'm more than happy to have a conversation about the glass tube range uh, and do some testing and uh, demonstration if necessary. Absolutely. Fantastic. And so I've just seen one more. I think Amy's been in again. Is the Rubis offer only for speed? I think that's meant to be speedy machines. Uh, yes, it is at the moment. Um, long term view is that it will roll out to um, our large format machines and hopefully eventually then onto our gateway products. Uh, it's all very much working with Austria, um, working the process at the moment. But as it stands of today, yes, Ruby software is only for speedy lasers at this point in time. But long term, stick with us. Um, it's definitely on the roadmap to, uh, to come out across our range. Excellent. Good stuff. I think um, I think we're running out of time, Jamie. I think we need to. Uh, I think we've um, yeah. I think we've hit our limit for uh, for our webinar. Get the wonderful James back involved. Is he going to join? There he oh, is. Brilliant. Hi guys. I even put my jumper on too. I, I brought it in for a reason. I'm not missing out wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know Must have inspired you, mate. <laughs> See, I'm closing my hair nearly. Um, no, great webinar there. As everyone said, I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. Really, lots of good inspiration there. Um, obviously, you didn't need me for the Q&A, which is a good thing. Um, no, yeah, I don't know, mate. No, honestly, no. thank you. I hope everybody really did enjoy that. The guys have done really well coming up with the ideas for the different products. Um, on another note, Craig has shown you some leather throughout this. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow on our socials. There's going to be something new, another bit of inspiration for our leather. And there's also some special news about the leather as well. So stay tuned tomorrow for a bit of information about that. Also, um, any product inspiration, or I do say any products you create, please tag us in them on social media. Use hashtag UK. You'll see them, share them. Happy to see anything our customers make. And obviously, the guys have done themselves a disservice. What they've made is really good. But, you know, they're, they're humble. They, they say they're just sales guys, but they're humble. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But anyway, th thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And, of course, follow us on social media, et cetera, for when our next live streams are. And we will keep you up to date. But in the meantime, it's thank you from me for the little bit of work I actually did in this. It's thank you from Jamie and Craig as well. And we hope you all have a good day, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks very Take much. Care. Thanks. Take care, everyone.